Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can convert your low-end laptop into a gaming machine on budget. In my case, I was able to put it together with a little over $70. Yours could cost a bit more or even less depending on what you already have and the kind of games you want to play on your laptop. Here I'll be showing the performance boost that I was able to get using this setup in terms of frames per second. And with that, you can have an idea of what to expect if you are going for higher or lower spec equipment. The approach in this video doesn't require you to take your laptop apart or to give up your Wi-Fi card from the mini PCIe slot. However, you will need a laptop with an express card slot. There are several of them out there you can choose from if you haven't got one. Of course, there is also the issue of compatibility with the different components involved. I'll be giving more details on that towards the end of the video. And with that said, let's jump right into it. So first, here are the components I'll be using. An EXP GDC 8.0 external laptop GPU dock. Here I'll be using the express card version of this. Then a Dell D220P01 power supply. This is a 220 watt power supply with a single 8 pin 12 volt output connector to match the 8 pin port in your eGPU. Next, you may need this 6-pin graphics card cable if you are using a bigger graphics card that requires additional power and has the 6-pin port somewhere around it. Then a laptop with an express card slot. There are several of them out there you can choose from if you haven't got one. Now, on this page, you will find a list of supported laptops according to brands. Now, not all laptops in this list have express card slots. This is a list of all laptops that are supported by all variants of the EXP GDC dock, which includes the mini PCIe, the express card, the NGFF, and the M.2x4 versions. So, for laptop compatibility using the express card version, you should first check that your laptop is in this list and also that it has an express card slot. For this video, I'll be using this um, Lenovo T530. It's an Intel i7 quad-core processor. It doesn't need to be an i7 quad-core. Most i5 and i3 processors will do just fine. Finally, and probably most importantly, a graphics card. Here is a list of the graphics cards supported by the EXP GDC 8.0. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Zotac GTX 750 Ti. It's a 2GB graphics card with quite decent graphics performance. And also on budget, I got this used on eBay for a fraction of the cost. There are lots of cheaper graphics cards out there that could give decent gaming performance. And if you can get a used one or pull one out from an old PC, then it saves you the cost. I will be leaving links to all the components I'll be using in this video down in the description. Now I will go ahead and connect these pieces together, a very straightforward process. There are no strict rules about the order of connection, but I just feel safer connecting the AC power cable after the other connections. So first I hook up the 8 pin power connector from the power supply. Then the HDMI connector from the express card data line. Now I will attach the graphics card to the PCIe express slot. Then hook up the express card to the laptop and if your graphics card needs extra power then you can use the 6-pin graphics card cable to extend power to your card. Now finally attach your power supply to the AC cable and that is the basic setup for the system. Here as soon as you attach the setup to an AC power source you should get this connection device notification sound which shows that your card is recognized. Most cards will start downloading and installing the graphics card drivers automatically. Sometimes you will also get this additional notification stating that your device is being set up. Unfortunately, it doesn't show the status of the setup so you just need to wait until you get another notification saying the device is ready. Then it may prompt you to restart your laptop to complete the setup. Here without removing the graphics card, go ahead and restart your computer. Now, even if the setup doesn't prompt you to restart your laptop, it's advisable to do so once the setup is completed. Otherwise, your PC might keep running on the internal graphics card. Now upon restarting, you should have your graphics card fully set up. 
you can check for the GPU activity icon in the notification area. You can also go to your device manager to check that both your internal and external graphics cards are present and that the drivers are fully installed with no errors. If for some reason an error occurs during the driver installation, then you should have a yellow triangle next to the driver indicating such error. If you encounter this error, try restarting your laptop and check to see if it disappears. If not, then try to update the driver by right-clicking and selecting Update Drivers from the list. If that still doesn't fix the problem, then you might need to manually download and install the required drivers. For the case of this graphics card, I will simply go to Google and search drivers for GeForce 750 Ti. Then click on the result from geforce.com. On this page, I will click on drivers. And under the manual driver search, I will select the parameters that match the specifications of my graphics card on operating system. Of course, yours might be entirely different, so you will need to select what matches your specifications. Here, I already selected the parameters that match my card specifications, so I will just hit Start Search. From the search results, I will select the latest driver, and on the page that follows, I will hit Download and wait for the download to complete. After downloading, I will run by simply double-clicking and then follow the instructions to complete the settings. After the installation, you might need to restart your laptop to complete the process. Now for NVIDIA graphics cards and possibly some other cards as well, after the driver installations, when you right click on your desktop, you should have this NVIDIA control panel option in the list. Here if you click on it, it should open up a control interface like this. From here you can adjust the settings to suit your needs. There's quite a good number of settings here. They are grouped in categories. We have the 3D settings and the video settings. Under each of them, you will find a bunch of other settings you can adjust to match your gaming setup. I will not be going into much details about the settings because it will differ depending on the graphics card you are using. But usually you would have a lot of settings to play around with and you can get a lot of guides online on the optimal settings for your graphics card. Now I'll be doing a bit of performance testing for the GTX 750 Ti. This is not a benchmarking video, but to answer two important questions, one is on how much power such graphics card actually require to run, talking about how big of a power adapter you need, and second is the question on how effective such graphics enhancement can be in terms of actual performance. Here I'll be comparing the GTX 750 Ti to my internal Intel HD Graphics 4000 in terms of how many frames per second you can get on each card. At the same time, I'll be showing a real-time display of the amount of power the GTX is taking during the process. Generally, most graphics cards will do well with the Dell 220 watt power supply without having to surge at any point. The EXP GDC user guide also recommends a maximum power input of 220 watt going through the 8 pin connector. Now, this doesn't mean that bigger power sources like the PM420 PB will cause the EXP GDC to burn out. However, I think attempting to draw more than 220 watt through the 8 pin connector could possibly damage the EXP GDC. 
Next is the issue of performance. And the question here is how much of a performance boost does one get from such upgrade? Is it worth the cost to use an eGPU in place of or to support your internal graphics card? Now, the answer to this question depends on what you already have running on your computer. Not all external graphics cards will do better than your integrated graphics card and not all graphics cards will work with the EXP GDC. This is an important parameter to consider if you set to implement this solution. For my case, there was a huge performance improvement using the GTX 750 Ti compared to the Intel HD 4000 in terms of the number of frames per second I was able to get. Here I'm extending to this 1920x1080 display. Of course, the performance will change if you are doing some 4K gaming, but the results here show an improvement from an average of 5.8 frames per second to almost 50 frames per second and a maximum of 83 frames per second, which is such a huge improvement. So in this case, it was absolutely worth the upgrade. And talking about power consumptions, I tried running the benchmark with ultra high settings to see how much power this card would draw in extreme cases, but surprisingly, it kept it below 100 watt the entire time. So there's still a lot of juice one can draw from the 220 watt Dell adapter. Now I tested this setup with five graphics cards from different manufacturers and out of these five, three worked fine and two didn't. Some online suggestions pointed that these two cards for some reasons are incompatible with the express card reader. Now this limitation is not unexpected because even the high-end all-in-one graphics docks like the ASUS ROG XG Station 2 supports only a specific category of graphics cards. So if you set out to implement this scheme, then you will need to do some research on the compatibility of the required components and be sure you have it all checked before placing your orders. Also check that the performance improvement is worth the investment. There are several online sources where you can check performance comparisons between different graphics cards. You can use that to check if your intended upgrade is worth your buck. And that is it for this tutorial. Hope this was able to help you out. Leave us a post in the comment if you have any questions or feedbacks. Drop us a like if you found it useful and share with anyone you think might want to see. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications on future tech support videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.